And we're joined at the roundtable this week by Dr. Rick Grant, who is the president of the William H. Minor Agriculture Research Institute in Chasing, New York, and also Rachel Dutill, who is the Minor Institute's Public Relations and Marketing Director. Nice to have you both here. Welcome. Great. Thank you for having us. You're launching a speaker series, and the first one is being held uh, next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, why you've decided to do this and, and some of the speakers that you've, you've lined up. Should I go ahead and start? Yeah. Go for it, yeah. Well, the, the, the basic reason why we're doing this is, you know, when, when you look at uh, food production, every, everyone eats, right? But there is so much confusion uh, among consumers, among the general public, since so few of us are actually farmers, less than 2%. We thought, what can we do that would really engage the community and, and bring some you know, science-based uh, information to them about food production systems, the big challenges really facing agriculture, face society today, there, there's no way around that. So if you talk about food security, food safety, right? The mm -hmm. nutritional value of the food and then maybe environmental impacts and what's coming down the road next is animal welfare, right? All of those things are agricultural challenges for sure, but uh, more and more I think every member of society needs to be engaged. We wanna have a series of speakers who can bring what we know to be true, bring it to the, soci bring it to the consumers in a I guess in an accessible way. Yeah. And will you focus mostly on farm and ag issues? Yeah, in, in the broadest sense, in the broadest sense, because we, when we, I was thinking about this driving down ag in society, it's not ag and society, because really when you think about it, right, Rachel, I mean, it's just agriculture should be a part of, of everyone's life, whether they're farming or not. Right. Yeah. So. For folks that aren't familiar with the Minor Institute, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and, and what your mission is. Sure. So, uh, Minor Institute's been around for, you know, well over 60 years, but mm -hmm. uh, before that it was kind of a model farm that was started by William Minor in the very early 1900s. Uh, today we have education programs. We work uh, in cooperation with SUNY Plattsburgh, the University of Vermont, and really uh, colleges across, across the country. Um, we also do all kinds of different research, primarily with our dairy herd, some equine uh, research, as well as a, a host of environmental research. Uh, and we do all kinds of outreach programs, too, that uh, focus on our education and research, as well as you know, our, our dairy herd, our equine herd, and, and the environment. So we, uh, we do all kinds of stuff, really. And we're open to the public. And we have a great uh, historical exhibit for folks to come check out as well. And speaking of that, uh, the founder, uh, William Minor, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the entrepreneur, an inventor, uh, right. Made his money in the rail industry, I believe, in Chicago uh, back at the turn of the, uh, the the last century in the early yeah. 1900s. But then <coughs> came and settled on this farm in, in northern New York, and and not only operated the farm, but really took the community in the region uh, under his wing, so to speak, and and uh, had had the community and and those folks uh, in, mm -hmm. in in mind. And that's uh, I guess a big legacy of, of, of his is that he really. Uh, for the Shazy community and the surrounding area. Um, he employed hundreds of people on the farm sure. and uh, mm -hmm. did a number of other things for the community through the years. He's a great philanthropist and I guess specifically the part of Miner's legacy that we're building on here is besides all of, the, all of that, really his vision from the very beginning for Heart's Delight Farm and for the school that uh, came after that was he really wanted the latest in science and technology, the best technology to really be put into the service of farming but also society you know to help get more you know efficient production of crops or animals but also mm -hmm. to protect the environment he's really far ahead of his time in that regard because he was talking about these same issues in the early 1900s right and now we're talking about them still different context but they're still the big challenges so that that's really maybe the fundamental reason why we're doing this sort of a program and still educating yeah. the community and helping out the community. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Now your first speaker is Dr. John Bramley. Right. He is scheduled for next week on, on mm -hmm. the 29th of May. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to talk about feeding the world in the 21st century, which is kind of a broad mm -hmm. right. topic. Yeah, but, it, but I think, well, w we view it, wouldn't you say, Rachel, sort of the, the, the introduction to this series. Right. And we, we think people will get a lot out of this, and we hope that they come. Uh, I'm pretty sure John's major point, Dr. Bramley's major point is going to be, we know that uh, by, the mid, by mid century, well, there'll be what, nine billion people, that's the typical quote, and everyone's predicting that we'll need to produce about 70% more food to feed this population should we choose to, you know, to be global in our reach, right, in terms of agriculture. So, so how do you do it? 
And that's when you start talking about technology and things like GMOs and um, th there's real science there, there's public perception, there's policy. All of these issues, it's not just a farming issue. And, and, and Dr. Bramley, because of his role at UVM in, in the agricultural sciences and what he's done since he left UVM, is really conversant with this. And I think he'll do a great job of laying out what we know and what the big challenges will be that society as a whole needs to really be engaged in. And then subsequent speakers, we hope to maybe carve out parts mm -hmm. of that and, and go deeper. But we want to keep the whole thing interactive, so lots of time for Q&A. And, and keep it accessible, not a lot of jargon, but what do people, what do we know? A and lay it out there so people can, can grasp it and then think, how, what do I think about that, right? That, that's, our, that's our fundamental goal with this. And obviously timely with, the, with GMOs, the new oh, labeling yeah. law in Vermont. Absolutely. A number of people thinking about that. Mm -hmm. People may wonder about this part of the world, our, yeah. our area here in the North Country, how <coughs> much of a role farmers here have in, in in feeding the world. Yeah, I think that's where it's easy to get, uh, well, sometimes I get confused when I sit there and think, okay, what should we be doing in agriculture? And that's my profession. Um, yeah, so everything, every issue, whether it's say food safety, th there's a very local component, which is what we tend to focus on. And, and so you talk about locally produced food, organic or not, and, and it shouldn't be either or, but how we feed ourselves here in New York and, and in the U.S., we're very lucky, really. In the developed world, we don't think about hunger as much. But I think as a society, we have to engage with the farming community and say, are we going to feed the world? And if we are, and up to this point, that's been our mission. If we are, how do we do it in a way that uh, meets that objective, but also satisfies the society here, right? Because it will involve technology. So it involves appreciating that technology and letting the, letting the consuming public um, understand it and probably express their opinions on it, right? And, but you can't have that dialogue unless you start getting speakers who can really bring the issues in, into focus. And this is not only for the farmers in the community, it's for, for everyone to come and participate. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's a major point. Uh, farmers are our bread and butter. You know, they, they, almost all of our programming is directed toward improving technology use on the farm, but for this specifically, in addition to the farmers, we need to have the community come in. The other 98%, right, who don't farm. So Dr. Bramley will be the first speaker on the, on the 29th of May, and then this is a, a lecture series that you, you may continue uh, in, in, the, in the months to come. Yeah, ahead, yeah well, we're, we're hoping that um, we're gonna follow this talk up with uh, one in the fall, maybe September, October timeframe, and we're pretty sure that we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a GMO talk to follow it up, which I think will be really interesting, well received, and I think that um, we'll hopefully get a lot of people t to attend. Um, you know, this, this series will be ongoing and hopefully we'll do, you know, in the neighborhood of two to three a year from this point forward. And obviously a hot topic in Vermont now with the labeling law. Is it mm -hmm. something that farmers here are, are struggling with uh, as far as using uh, genetically modified seeds in, in, in this area? Uh, struggling's not the, that they're ubiquitous. That's the thing that people maybe don't understand is that uh, aside from organic producers who couldn't use them, right? Right. Uh, the conventional farmers, uh, you know, well over 90% of, of soybeans and corn produced across the U.S., including here, are all GMO products at this point. And there's other products as well. So I think, I think maybe what's catching some people off guard, not, not the farmers, they're, they're, they've been embracing it uh, for the last decade or more. But it's just, oh, when did this happen? You know, and, and part of it's the, the terminology, genetically modified organism. Well, who would want to eat that? Mm -hmm. but until you really understand what it is and the fact that we've been doing you know, genetic modification for centuries in terms of traditional breeding. This is just bringing a different technology. And when it comes to farmers, mm -hmm. a number of farmers have been using corn that, that's mm -hmm. been engineered for, for decades. Uh, that they're always trying mm -hmm. new variations All of seeds, hybrids. hybrids yeah. And yeah, exactly. It's just one more step from the industry, from the farming industry standpoint, but I think the time is really here when you say, Rachel, the, the, the community needs to appreciate that and really get involved with the discussion and be part of it. Otherwise, technology is going to keep marching forward and this, things like the GMO labeling issue is just the, the tip of the iceberg. There'll be more of that, right? Unless we get out in front and really educate and, and let people feel like they ha have a say or have a voice, have an appreciation for the big challenges. 
Well, and and also that they actually can understand what you know what it what it means. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that there's a lot of misinformation and just confusion. Uh, you know, there's there's buzzwords and there's uh, you know debate, but there's not a whole lot of you know actually getting at the the real issue and the science that you know. Um, that that's there. I mean, so I think that I think that, I think mm -hmm. that uh, the the public is is at a place where they're they're really interested and they want to know more. So we're happy to be the outlet to to provide them with that information. And again, that's a whole part of your mission and uh, William Miner's probably uh, vision uh, way back when to be able to do this, to be the conduit to uh, have these mm -hmm. conversations for for not only the ag community but the the, the community in general. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely something where. We're becoming more active in, I mean, forever we've had this mission of, of improving technology on the farm, but really it's just been in the very recent past that we've made it a, a concentrated, a, a conscious decision to really step beyond our stone gates, literally. You know, let's, let's engage the community and really serve an educational role in terms of what, what is modern farming and what does it mean for the environment, for the, for the animals, for the people working on the farm, and for the community that uh, we're all consumers, right? So that, that part's new, but we really want to take it as seriously as our traditional mission, focusing on the farmers. Your first speaker, John Bramley, is well known, many years at UVM. Uh, mm -hmm. He was part of a, a research team that uh, made great strides in, uh, in cloning genes to develop animals that were resistant to mastitis, yeah, which is obviously issue. a huge issue for, for farmers. Sure, absolutely. But again, there's something that mouthful could certainly be misinterpreted, right? Although it's, it's, it's wonderful and quite benign from the human standpoint, wonderful for the cow and for the farmer, but just hearing that, unless you knew a little bit about it, right. could be off-putting, so. And, but, and yeah. we'll, maybe we can give a 15 second, <laughs> a short, uh, mastitis, obviously an infection in, in, a, mm -hmm. in a cow's udder that can, can affect the cow's health and, and, oh, and quantity and quality of milk. So sure. uh, for, for uh, mm -hmm. generations, farmers have been trying to find new mm -hmm. ways to, to deal with mastitis. Right, it's one of the biggest economic challenges any dairy farmer would, would have, for sure, yeah. So that uh, was uh, uh, John Bramley's mm -hmm. background, but then uh, also a number of years in administration mm -hmm. at UVM, a president for a short time uh, a few years ago. So uh, it'll be nice to kick off the, the series with mm -hmm. him as your first speaker. May 29th, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the Minor Institute, free and open to the public. Yes. If yes. folks would like to uh, come and, and hear the first of your lecture series. Mm -hmm. And if they'd like to learn more about the Minor Institute, your mission and what you do there, uh, whminer.org is your website mm -hmm. and they can yes. go uh, learn about the history of the, of the farm that turned into uh, this wonderful research sure. institute. Dr. Grant and uh, Rachel Dutil, thanks a lot for stopping by and taking the time to be with us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.